Hey guys, I hope everyone is doing well. This week's mini lesson is divided into five parts because I will be going in, um, over the various parts of this assignment. This video is the introductory video where I'm going to go over some updates about the AP language exam um, and go over some key vocabulary for this week's reading. So the text that we're going to be focusing on this week is called Not All Men Are Sly Foxes. And just to go over some updates about the AP Lang and what you guys are going to be noticing, um, all AP exams are still going to be um, provided to students. However, they've changed them all so that they're now going to be offered online. So luckily for the AP language exam, the exam is only going to consist of one essay, which is the rhetorical analysis response. I was actually very excited when I saw that that was going to be the essay of focus because we have written um, a number of rhetorical analysis response and have done a lot with um, rhetorical analysis. So just so you guys are aware, for those of you guys who are still interested in taking the AP language exam, it's going to be held on Wednesday, May 20th at 2 p.m. And again, it's going to be done online so you guys can get onto your um, phones or your iPads or your computers, laptops, whatever technology you guys have, you guys can log in um, at 2 o'clock or a little bit before and complete the exam online. I am not sure where or how this is going to happen, but when I do get more updates, I will make sure that I do let you guys know. So being that the AP exam is going to consist of the rhetorical analysis response, the summative assessment for unit five, which is the relationships unit, is going to be to write a rhetorical analysis response. And the reason why we want you guys to write a rhetorical analysis response is because we want to make sure that you guys are able to practice for this exam and do as well as you possibly can. So I do want to let you guys know that the assignments that you're going to see this week um, are going to be very similar to assignments that you have seen in the past. And it might seem like it's a little bit redundant because you are seeing the same things over and over again. But it is to make sure that we are giving you multiple opportunities to practice again for this part of the exam. Um, and with that said, I do want to let you guys know that we will be providing you guys with feedback regularly to make sure that you guys are prepared and can be as successful as possible on that exam. So two things that you guys are going to notice is Soapstone and the Rhetorical Precy. And both of these are going to be very, very helpful when writing um, the Rhetorical Analysis Essay because it does contain the basics. And I will show you what I mean by it contains the basics um, when I go over um, the Rhetorical and um, the Rhetorical Precy template in, part f in the video titled Part 4. Um, I also do want to let you guys know, um, which I've mentioned before, it is a great idea for you to try your best to memorize the rhetorical pricey template because it does contain some analysis. You don't have your full analysis in there, but it does contain some analysis. So if this is all you can do, because this exam is going to be timed, um, you have 45 minutes to write the essay. I'm not sure if the reading period is included in that or not. If it's is included, the 45 minutes does include the reading period, then you have less time to write this essay. So if you're only able to bang out the rhetorical pricey, that'll definitely help you guys um, earn points in the essay. Okay. So now to go over some vocab. Sex and gender, you guys should be familiar with as we focused on um, last week or the previous week. Um, but just to review, sex has to do with your biology and the way that you are born, right? Biological traits that society associates with being male and female. So this, again, is scientific. This is based off of biology. And then gender is something that, as Mead said, is something that... Um, is culturally informed, right? 
Um, it depends on the influence that you have around you. It depends on how you yourself identify. It has nothing to do with biology. And sexuality isn't something that we have gone over, but I do want to point out that oftentimes when people talk about sex and gender, sexuality is also included. Um, the definition is here. I'm not going to go over it, but I do think that it is important that you guys know. Two other um, words that you guys are going to see are stereotypes and discrimination. So according to Simply Psychology, stereotypes are a fixed, overgeneralized belief about a particular group or class of people. In other words, um, there is a specific group of people or an individual um, that looks a certain way and you automatically believe that they are a certain way or that they have certain characteristics or certain attributes um, just because other people or society has said one thing about this group. Um, so this image right here is an example of stereotypes. Um, I really personally like it because it's showing you that stereotypes is pretty much a mold. It's something that, you know, people believe in that it could be true for some people, but for a good number, it's not actually true, right? So for some of these, you might be able to walk through them, but they're not going to be perfect fits. And then that's why these are stereotypes, right? Because yes maybe you are part of this particular group of people but that does not necessarily mean that you um, fall into that group right so an example of a stereotype could be that americans are all racist right and while i was raised with the dominican culture um, i was born and raised in the united states so i am american um, and i do not believe myself to be racist at all whatsoever right so that's a stereotype americans are racist but not all of us are racist um discrimination falls very um close to this um i'm putting them on the same page because um when i think of stereotypes um, sometimes I do think of discrimination. Sometimes they can go hand in hand, but this is not always the case. So discrimination is now when you take groups of people and you treat them unfairly or with prejudice because of the characteristics that they possess. And that might be because of their race, because of their age, because of their sexual orientation or their sexual preference, um, their abilities, et cetera, et cetera. And this definition is according to the American Psychological Association. So these two images here um, are here to kind of give you an idea of discrimination, right? So this first one here um, displays discrimination because you have a group of people who are all blue and they're not allowing the person who is orange to join in on their circle. So here you can see that they're discriminating, I guess, based off of color, right? This image, um, I do appreciate because, um, no guys, class is not over. Um, this image I do appreciate because it does have the justice, um, symbol here. Um, and it's giving you a visual representation, visual representation of some of the groups that can be discriminated against. So for example, um, people can be treated unfairly based off of their sexual preference, um, or their sexuality in this case, right? They could be discriminated against based off of their ability. They could be discriminated against based off of their gender or the color of their skin, based off of their religion, right? So you can be discriminated against based off of a variety of different things. People can treat you unfairly because of the way that you look, the way that you sound, um, and again, many of the characteristics that you do have. And the last thing that I do want to go over is um, analysis. This definition is taken from this article titled Definition and Examples of Analysis and Composition by Mr. Richard, Mr. Richard. And according to Mr. Richard, analysis is a form of expository writing in which the writer separates a subject into its elements or parts. 
When applied to a literary work, analysis involves a careful examination and evaluation of details in a text, such as in a critical essay. So the reason why I want to go over the definition of the word analysis is because um, the author that we are going to be working with um, does use analysis in the essay, Not All Men Are Sly Foxes. And it's important for us to know um, analysis because what he is doing here is he's breaking down um, a certain aspect of what he is talking about. And so it's going to be our job to identify what it is that he is breaking down. And analysis is something that we're also going to be conducting as we're identifying soapstone and composing our rhetorical praise because essentially what we're doing is we're picking apart some of the different elements, some of the different writing strategies that he is using and talking about why or how it is effective or ineffective, right? Because the purpose of rhetoric is to try to convince someone, right? Rhetoric is the study of persuasion. What are we doing? What are we saying to persuade someone to agree with our side? So we want to see how do these rhetorical strategies help to um, explain what's going on. How do they support the argument that he is trying to present here? Okay. So again, um, these are some vocab words that are going to be important for um, this week's reading. Um, if you guys want to um, see a breakdown of the annotations and go over some strategies, please take a look at the video titled part one. If you're interested in um, seeing more about the guiding questions and seeing what those are as they're breaking down, please take a look at part two. If you are interested in a breakdown of the multiple choice questions, take a look at video number three. And last but not least, video number four, I'm going to be breaking down um, the rhetorical praises. So please make sure that you take a look at some of these other videos. And as always, if you have any questions, please make sure that you reach out to me. We are here to help you guys out.